The decision by Kenya's Minister for Medical Services, Professor Peter Anyangnyongo, to go public about the fact that he had been diagnosed with prostate cancer and that he sought treatment in the United States of America has brought into sharp focus the plight of cancer patients in Kenya. Every year, 82,000 people are diagnosed with cancer in this country, further stretching the limited cancer treatment resources available at the Kenyatta National Hospital, the only public facility that offers that kind of treatment in the entire country. The ones who go through treatment, it's like only 3,000 to 6,000 out of the, the 90,000 patients. In his three-part series on the Standard on Sunday, Nyongo appeared humbled. He wrote, the situation in our country is simply deplorable, and my heart bleeds for our people when I accept this. In the article, he points out that there are only five oncologists or cancer doctors in the public sector working at Kenyatta Hospital. Supporting personnel are lacking. General surgeons are forced to operate on cancer patients with outdated and imprecise equipment. As it is now, uh, the, the, one of the machines is has broken down and it cannot be repaired. Okay, there's intention to try and, I mean, we are going to replace this machine very soon, maybe in the next one month. Uh, but as it is now, we are having 110 patients who are all going through, going through one equipment, which is supposed to be handling only about 50 to 60 patients. What is happening at the Kenyatta Hospital, according to the Medical Services Minister, is one of the worst tragedies in the history of healthcare delivery in Kenya. In this day and age, to realize that Kenyatta National Hospital has only one COBOL C60 machine for the radiation of cancer patients is a disaster. C60 COBOL machine, when you talk to people here in the U.S., was last seen in health facilities 20 years ago. We now have a waiting list which has gone up to September. Regarding prostate cancer in particular, there is yet another disturbing observation researchers have made. Prostate cancer appears to target black men in particular. It's clear that prostate cancer is much more common in African American men. So one of the controversies is, is this an inherent characteristic of African men? Or is it just African American men? Well, it's a little difficult to tell because first of all, prostate cancer screening is not popular in Africa. In most cases, prostate cancer does not have obvious symptoms, and a growing tumor may escape notice because the prostate itself grows bigger as a man gets older. You begin by having frequency in urination. You go to uh, pass water more frequently than you should, really. They might present with back pain. They might present with hip pain. Professor Nyongo has some advice for Kenyans and their lifestyles. Eat well and eat nutritious foods. Roast meat, roast chicken, and uh, overly oiled food is bad for you. It will increase your cholesterol, and that is the thing that is uh, very cancer-promoting. Sugar is a terrible thing to put into your body because cancer cells feed on sugar. I made that mistake myself. <laughs> As for Kenyan men in particular, the minister has some food for thought. The terrible habit in, in, in Kenya, I think, which, which has become a tradition, or going out and eating nyamachoma and, and drinking beer. It should be done in moderation, actually, because it has been proven now that it is one of the biggest causes of colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer, and so on. Uh, if you make it a habit from the age of 18 to the age of 50, you are a sure candidate for those. When no less than the Minister for Medical Services decides to seek treatment in a foreign country, what message does it send about the state of Kenya's healthcare services? And what does it mean for the millions of Kenyans who can't afford to seek similar treatment abroad? In tomorrow's episode, Professor Nyongo talks about the state of cancer treatment facilities in Kenya. I got terrible news and, and information after I, I wrote those articles from Kenyans and people sent me photographs of ordinary Kenyans dying in villages with huge wounds on their necks, cancerous wounds, but they don't know where to go. Citizen Special continues tomorrow. Sylvester Citizen TV.